Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here again in our Wednesday morning safety training meeting. Safety is so important in our company. That's our number one. Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning into this first episode of the Routing for Success video training series. Since launching the podcast earlier this year, we've received a tremendous amount of positive feedback and support from our audience. It seems like people are really getting value from the guest interviews that we've conducted. However, one of the things that many people have asked us about is whether we can bring some of these guests back and actually have them teach on specific topics related to the business of FedEx ground contracting. So we've decided to do exactly that and expand Routing for Success to offer training videos on a variety of specific topics related to FedEx Ground. Now, how are these training videos going to be different from the multitude of other training options that are currently available in the market? There are two things that we're hoping will make these videos unique. The first is that we're taking a decentralized approach. Well, what does that mean? Uh, we here at AP Financing are not FedEx contractors. I do love the FedEx ground business. I'm a stakeholder in the contractor model, but I'm not a contractor myself. And I am certainly not qualified to teach anyone how to be good at actually conducting that business on a day to day basis. So instead, we are going to bring in the real experts, people who are running these businesses at an elite level today to come in and teach on what they know how to do best. The second way that this training will be different is that it will be free. Uh, while it is true that there are many other options available out there as, for, as far as educational resources for people who are in the business of being a FedEx ground contractor, the reality is that many of them are locked behind a paywall. We are happy to provide this material completely free of charge. The first topic that we've chosen to cover is probably the most important topic of all, safety. And to teach on the topic of safety, there is no one better than Sal Lerma. Sal is the president and founder of Lerma Transport Incorporated, independent service provider for FedEx Ground based out of Yuma, Arizona. Lerma Transport went an incredible 1,000 consecutive days accident free. Sal is a multi-time winner of the National FedEx Entrepreneur of the Year Award. And you may remember meeting him in episode number one of the Routing for Success podcast. Sal's passion for safety was ignited when one of his drivers got in what should have been a very minor fender bender type incident. But what should have been a minor incident turned into a multi-year nightmare when the person in the other vehicle began claiming that they were injured as a result of the accident. And they ended up suing Sal, Sal's company and FedEx ground in court. That dragged on for four agonizing years. Sal and FedEx ultimately won the lawsuit because the person wasn't actually injured, but that was still an expensive and painful experience that really instilled into Sal the importance of having a safety program so that he would never have to go through that again. In this video, Sal reveals his 10-step program for fleet safety, which helped his business achieve 1,000 consecutive days accident-free. I am pleased to present to you Mr. Sal Lerma. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sal Lerma. Um, I operate Lerma Transport out of Yuma, Arizona for the last 23 years. Uh, one of the things that I, I always had as far as my passion has always been safety. Uh, several years ago, actually about 10, but actually 12 years ago, I uh, put together a 10 step to a successful safety plan. It's one of the things that I've been using to uh, build a, a better, safer fleet in, in my uh, in my area, but also it's uh, a program, a safety plan that I shared with other uh, contractors so that they could have a safe operation in uh, their entities and in their stations. Uh, I like to cover the 10 steps uh, one by one. Um, if we could get started, I'd like to go from here. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here again in our Wednesday morning safety training meeting. Safety is so important in our company. That's our number one priority. What are the consequences for a distracted for distracted driving? We do run a safety training class on Wednesdays. The rest of the week, we do have safety tips for our drivers. Did you check your fluids already? Okay. The most important thing about safety, we have to stay consistent. This can't just be a weekly thing, it has to be a daily thing. We need to make sure that our drivers are mentally and physically fit before they get behind the wheel and go into the motoring public. How are you doing so far? Doing good. How's the truck? How's your levels? No way, I'm checking it right now. Okay. 
we want to make sure we start with our pre-trips. We want to make sure that all of our drivers are, are checking their fluids, oil, tires, lights. My supervisor, Frank Mesa, and myself wanted to revise our pre-trip, post-trip program that we have. We wanted to actually add more detail to the pre-trip as far as windshield wipers, the fluids, cracks in the windows, and we present that to the Highway Patrol Department and they really like that, so we've been implementing this. So our vehicles are leaving the station now, they are 100% and that's to the result of this new uh, pre-trip, post-trip report that, that we're using every morning. The first driver that I'd like to uh, present this award, uh, we call this award the Top Driver Award, it's a quarterly award and we'd like to present this award to Daniel C. Bryant. The most important thing is that we want to reward our drivers for good behavior, for, for safe drivers being out in the motoring public. Just let our drivers know the importance of safety, that safety is everybody's responsibility. So the topics that we're going to cover today, it all starts with the interview, orientation, driver trainer, pre-trip and post-trip inspections, safety meetings, safety training class, vehicle maintenance, safety technology, safety evaluation, and last but not least, safety incentives. So starting with the uh, first uh, step, which is the interview, it all starts with the employment application. Now our safety program starts by interviewing the right candidates. It is so important that when we hire a driver that we need to know as much information as we need from who's coming on board, who's going to be behind the wheel on our vehicles. The goal is to have the safest drivers out on the road. And we know that from time to time, there's some bad drivers that have slipped through the cracks. So the employment application is crucial. We want to make sure that every candidate, before we bring them on board, that we have an opportunity to do an interview with them. Uh, the application is so that you could gather as much information from each candidate. And then it determines on your part whether this is a person that you want to proceed for the rest of the training or this is a, a person that you don't feel that will fit the needs of your company. Uh, the other thing is checking MVR's three years driving record. It's so important that when they come for the interview that they bring your three year driving record. We're always looking for issues there like speeding violations, seatbelt violations, reckless driving violations, and even DUIs because it's going to tell us a lot about these drivers. The goal is to try to have these candidates have clean records. Uh, that's the most important thing because if they do come with seatbelt violations, we're probably going to have seatbelt issues with these drivers when uh, they join our team. So it's so important that they bring a three-year driving record. Also, we want to make sure that we're checking for previous employment. Uh, it's, it's important that uh, we call the companies where they worked. There's a lot of things we cannot ask, but one of the things that we could ask that he worked there for the time that he said he was there, what size vehicles that he drove, or what kind of a position that he held in that company. Uh, some of the things that will help you make a better decision whether this is the person we want to hire. The other thing is always make sure that we're checking if there were drivers in various companies. Check for any kind of safety training because it's important that if he has some sort of safety training, that's going to help us uh, bring these guys in probably a little bit faster. But most drivers don't have any kind of safety training, which we do. We do have a, a program, and I'll talk about that in the next few steps. And always make sure they do have a, a valid driver's license. Uh, we also need to check, make sure we're checking for expiration dates and any kind of restrictions and endorsements like whether uh, there's a restriction for uh, corrective lens, do they wear glasses, they don't, any other kind of restrictions or endorsements that might not allow them to drive one of our vehicles that are set for over 10,001 pounds. Going into step number two, which is the orientation. 
Number one, all new drivers are required to complete a five-day orientation program that consists of comprehensive classroom training. Once we are ready to hire a driver, first thing we want to make sure we do is background check. With first advantage, we want to make sure that they could pass a DOT physical examination in a drug screen. They also need to go through the uh, safety information guide that we find through My Ground Biz, and it's a safety manual that they need to read and also go through it before they could come on board. The other thing, and this has to do with our companies, go over and cover all company policies and procedures. This information you will find in your handbook. It is crucial that every entity should have a handbook that a new employee need to go through the handbook, understand what's on the handbook before they, they read and sign. Uh, any questions there, we just need to give them more information. But it's so important that before they start driving our vehicles, that they understand all company policies and all procedures with your company, with DOT, with FMCSA, and with FedEx. The next one is safety and regulatory compliance employee handbook. We need to make sure that they understand all the safety policies that we have, what can affect them. Now, keep in mind that in my station, I'm in Yuma, Arizona, and my uh, routes, uh, CSA routes are in California, which means we go through the state line. Leaving Arizona, we go through a uh, wait station that we have the potential to get pulled over for random um, inspections. As we get into California, we go to another way station. And again, we have the chance that we're gonna get pulled over for a random inspection. Coming back to Arizona, there's another way station. And again, uh, get pulled over for random inspections. We, we do go through about, we probably get about between 40 to 60 roadside inspections every year. So it's important that our drivers are trained on their safety, that they understand pre treating their vehicles, all the safety regulations that they need to know. So that could be in compliance. And all that information, again, should be in our handbooks. Number two, there will be before they start their uh, driving behind the wheel or before they even get approved by FedEx, they need to do in what we have on online and in-class room uh, training manuals, videos, quizzes, and final exam. This is so important that they have to go through a uh, three-day program. And there are vendors that FedEx have approved where they could tap into to tap into one of these classes. This is um, one of the programs that... Uh, I also have the opportunity to travel throughout the nation, uh, certifying uh, AOs and BCs. But this is a mandatory uh, compliance from FedEx that when we hire a new driver, they will go through a three-day training program. And it consists of classroom training, which has manuals, videos, quizzes, and final exam. Uh, it starts with pre-trip inspections road and, and range, obstacle course, on the road driving tests, minimum of 10 miles, roadside inspections, understanding everything about a roadside inspection. Continue on, step number two in the orientation is so important that again, that we uh, need to put together a handbook. The employee handbook includes or should include safety policies and procedures. Also, it is crucial that we have a safety training program for drivers. A safety training manual, the safety training manual is a step-by-step -step guide that will train and develop drivers in all functions of their work areas and also keep your business in compliance with all safety regulations. Moving to step number three, is a driver trainer. Uh, some companies call them driver trainer. Others may have certified trainers. But basically what we want to make sure that before we put a driver behind the wheel on their own, that they go with a driver trainer 
And number one is to make sure that all new drivers will be assigned a driver trainer to review DOT regulations, pre-trip, post-trip procedures, evaluate the driver's overall driving skills, including backing and parking techniques. Apply what has been learned from a classroom to an actual job situation. Familiarize the new driver with customer scanners and delivery procedures. Answer any questions or concerns that were not addressed in the classrooms. And to review hours of service rules. Now, it's important that our drivers go with a driver trainer because there is so much that they have to learn before they go on their own. Now, it's so important that as we train drivers with pre-trip and post-trip procedures, that they understand not just what to check for, but why we're doing that. And to give an example is that down here in our area, even when we get pulled over for a random inspection, we could have a brand new truck with zero defects. But when a highway patrol officer asks a driver a certain question, if that driver cannot answer that question, we're going to get dinged in that area. Like, for example, down here, we had had the issue where with hazmats, the officer asked the driver, can I see your hazmats? Sure, we show them our hazmats that were in the back of the vehicle, on the floor, because we don't put those in the shelves. Arrows are up in the box the OP-900 paperwork, all paperwork's in the envelope. So everything is done correctly. But the officer asked my driver, why don't you have a, a diamond planker on your truck showing that you have hazmat uh, material or hazmat packages in your vehicle? My driver could not answer that question, so we got ding on it. So we had to train our driver to understand that if we haul less than a 1,000 pounds, 999 pounds we are not required by FMCSA. We're not required to have a plaque on our vehicle. So it's important that when we're training drivers that we under, that we train them so they could understand why they check or they inspect certain items a certain way and why. Because again, it's not so much whether your vehicle has defects, but also the lack of knowledge is what officers want to make sure that is not on the road. So drivers, we need to make sure that we train drivers so they could be knowledgeable of any kind of question that the officer is going to ask them about their vehicle. So it's important that a driver trainer goes with them uh, maybe for a week, maybe for two weeks or even longer, depending how fast this new drivers are learning.